Since the release of Gran Turismo Sport roughly a week ago, at least at the time of releasing this video, I've had a number of messages saying, am I going to make another part in my review series for Gran Turismo Sport? Of course, we covered the beta extensively, then the demo. That video actually got way more views than I was expecting it to have in a very short time. That was pretty cool to see. But now, of course, we have the full game. And of course, with full access to all of the cars, or pretty much all of the cars that you can afford, that is, all of the missions, the what you could call career mode to some degree, that's probably the most controversial thing about the game, and all of the full features that the demo or the beta obviously aren't going to have. So with that being said, this portion of my review series, which I think this is number 11 or 12, something like that, if you include the demo and the beta, this is going to be a little bit of a different review, because with those reviews, I wanted to put the videos up and not really give a personal opinion as much as possible, more so just report on what I saw. For those who don't have access initially to the beta especially, but also maybe who haven't had time to download the demo or didn't have the opportunity to see what that's like, whereas now that it's the full game, this particular part of the review is not going to be the same in that way. This is going to be far more personal because, of course, I can only speak to the amount of the game that I've done, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to describe my experience so far with GT Sport, and, of course, that could be drastically different to somebody else, and you'd expect it to be. Now, over the course of the past week, there are certain things which I have done, certain things which I haven't done, which a lot of my friends, for instance, on PSN or a lot of the subs here on YouTube will have already completed. I haven't done a single driving school mission, <laughs> not one. I do, of course, plan to do them, but I've just had other things to do. GT Sport, of course, isn't the only game I'm playing anyway. I'm playing about five or six different racing games every week, mostly for the sake of YouTube. So I just don't have as much time as just being 100% devoted to hours and hours of one game. With that being said, though, within the space of a week, I've certainly had more than enough time to gauge my initial thoughts, to collect my opinions and thoughts on the game, and to let the game sink in. Because even when I watch a movie, I don't really usually know if I like it or not as soon as I've seen it. I have to give it a few days or a few weeks. Sometimes over that time I'll like it more, sometimes less. So what's GT Sport done for me in the past week? Well, overall, I would say that the game is considerably different to both the beta and the demo in terms of how much I enjoy it. When I first played the beta, and I believe I said this a number of times in those videos, I didn't necessarily have a huge amount of anticipation for GT Sport, and this goes as far back as literally a year ago in London when I went to play the game at the press release event. Back then it was cool, it was all about being in the moment and looking forward to a new game. We knew far less about the game back then, the amount of gameplay that I could do was far more limited. Then with the beta, again it was very limited, but it was also limited in specific ways as to what cars you could win and you couldn't buy anything and there were certain tracks selected for you each day that kind of stuff so it only gives you a very narrow window into the game and then the demo opened that window up a bit more you could see more of the cars more of the features so that was cool again and now of course with the full game you get access to for the most part everything there were some things which haven't been released i'm not sure if they have been released now but stuff like the livery editor i believe they were holding back due to the server load stuff like that and that's fair enough I don't really care about that I believe they have released that one now though because I've seen some liveries up on the feed on the game so what are my thoughts am I glad that I bought GT Sport in particular the collector's edition which is not a cheap game especially when you've already bought the collector's edition of Forza 7 as well that is not cheap at all so it's got a lot to live up to but of course that's primarily price more importantly in the grand scheme of things is how does it compare to other Gran Turismo games well, to kick off the real meat of this review, a very personal review, again, I will say that, is the number one thing that I would recommend doing when you go into playing Gran Turismo Sport, if you buy it for yourself, if you play it at a friend's house, whatever the case may be, don't go into the game expecting a Gran Turismo game. That may seem like a strange thing to say, but what I mean by that is go into this game viewing it as sport. Don't think of it as Gran Turismo Sport, go into it imagining that this is a whole new third contender to go up against Gran Turismo and Forza. Imagine that that were the case, something more like Project Cars or Assetto Corsa. With that being the case, 
This game delivers a totally different experience to any other Gran Turismo game. And way back when the beta was released, when the demo was released even, my thoughts for the game were still mixed. Did I really want to buy it? Honestly, no. And I believe, again, I did mention that, I think, in at least one or two portions of that review for the beta, I specifically said, and if it wasn't in that series, it was in Beards and Cars, that I was mainly going to buy it for the sake of you guys on YouTube, to make videos, to provide for the community, all that kind of good stuff. If it were left up to me, and I wasn't making YouTube videos, and this channel wasn't a thing, would I have still bought it? I don't know. I might have bought it eventually, but I don't think I'd have gone for day one, and I certainly wouldn't have gone for the Ultimate Collector's Edition, because I just don't do that usually. Forza 7 and GT Sport are the first time I've ever done that. And the reason why I did that wasn't just to have the best version. I often don't care about having the best version. The reason why I had that is because it gives me all of that needed advancement and advantage for starting the game. Because, of course, when you're making car reviews and tuning, you need to have cars to make videos about. So I needed that bit of extra cash, that kind of stuff, to really get a leg up in the game. And that helped out a lot. It meant that basically day one, I could have been doing reviews for Vision GT cars, which is exactly what I did. So with that in mind, now that I've bought the game, what is it like? Do I enjoy it? Well, as I already said, I would recommend going into it, forgetting the fact that it's a Gran Turismo game, because if you compare it to all of the previous Gran Turismo games, you won't be disappointed necessarily. And of course, again, this is very personal to me. I was not disappointed with this game in the slightest. But one of the reasons why is because I already knew that there wasn't a conventional career mode. If you go into it not knowing that, then I think you probably would be, because that's such a strange thing. And it's still strange, of course, not to have a traditional A-spec or even B-spec as well career mode. However, and I cannot stress this enough, and I am not sticking up for Polyphony here. You guys know if I don't like something that Polyphony has done, I bring it up. I bring it up a lot for both Forza and Gran Turismo. I am not a fanboy. I like them both, and I will criticise them both. However, we need to remember that Gran Turismo 6 underwent a huge amount of development. When the game first came out, it was bare bones. The career mode was never really improved that much. GT6 still has the worst career mode of any Gran Turismo game, even compared to the prologues, and that's saying something. You can complete all of it in about one or two days, or actually probably one or two hours. <laughs> but with GT Sport, that's not the case. Over the course of a week, I've done most of the missions, I've done a decent amount of the track experiences, but I haven't even started the driving school stuff, I haven't done a single online race, so there's still plenty for me to do. But of course, with that being said, it's still not going to be as long term as something like GT4, for instance, which has a colossal career mode, or even GT5, which had a pretty decent career mode in terms of sheer size and scope, although if we look at it without the glasses of nostalgia and be honest about it, Gran Turismo 5 actually has the same career mode twice, if we're honest. A-spec and B-spec are the same thing, you just drive or tell your driver, but the races are exactly the same. So this isn't really that much of a departure. Gran Turismo 5 had a good career mode, but it only had two versions of the same career mode. Gran Turismo 6 had a bad career mode. So Gran Turismo Sport and what it's doing so far hasn't disappointed me at all. For other people, of course, that is definitely different. A lot of people have been very vocal about it, as you can justifiably be. I would not rag on someone for hating it for that. Fair enough, if you want to do that. I can understand where you're coming from. However, the thing that I'm hoping for, and I can't say this with any certainty, of course, but as I was mentioning about GT6, GT6 with the Senna missions, with the additional... Sierra track, the additional Sierra missions, the addition of Midfield Raceway, all of the free DLC cars, we had something like 20 I think it was ultimately, the Vision GT program, the game was made much bigger over the course of its life, and the reason why it doesn't feel that way is because those updates came quite far apart, which made it feel like a bit of a drip feed system. That wasn't a good way of doing it, but even Kaz himself I believe has said that GT6 wasn't really ideal. Overall, I had a huge amount of fun with it, but my point is that I think GT Sport is being specifically geared up to do that same thing. We already know that there are around 500 cars planned to be added. That's cool, of course. But I'm talking more about 
the game side of things. Not the cars, not the tracks, but the career mode, the missions. And I strongly suspect that they are going to add significant portions to this game. Now, of course, that doesn't justify not having those things day one. They've had a long time to make this game. Of course, I totally understand where you're coming from. But for me, it allows me to at least hold out that level of hope. And I think it's pretty well-founded hope, given their past record, that this game, like GT6, will be made bigger. Because they clearly plan for this game to have a reasonably long life cycle, at least probably three to four years before the next one. Three to four years, probably at least, if we're honest about it. But we'll have to see in that regard. As far as the rest of the game, getting beyond just this constant conversation about a lack of career mode, which is only one aspect of the game, let's get real, what did I think about the rest of it? Well, the visuals are incredible. I knew the game would look good, but it looks so much better than the beta and the demo to me. Maybe it's because I didn't have a huge amount of time to see the full scope of the game then. And I'm not just talking about scapes. They look fantastic, of course, because they are real. That's why they look realistic. The cars are digital, put into a real background. Which is a great idea. That's something I've wondered why they didn't do for years. Even in a race, why not just have an actual model of the sky? It's not like it has to move. Use a 360 degree camera like they do for YouTube videos these days and have an actual sky in a racing game instead of a rendered one. Why not do that? But whatever, that's a side point. <laughs> as far as stuff beyond the obvious, like graphics, the physics took me a little bit to get used to. And as I mentioned in my reviews for both the demo and the beta, I found that the handling changed significantly from the beta to the demo. But then from the demo to the full game, maybe this is just me, but it felt slightly different again. Now, I don't think that can be the case, because I believe some people had the demo, then bought the game, and then it basically turns the demo into the full game and unlocks everything for you. I may be wrong, but I think that's the case. I didn't do that, but I think you can. But um, when you go into the game, it took me a little while to get used to the handling. As you'd expect it to, it is different. I'd said that months ago for the beta, even. But now that I've got used to it, and I drive basically with no aids on any cars now, I've gotten to the point where I'm settled in, and I really enjoy it now. You cannot throw the cars around with the reckless abandon that you would on any other Gran Turismo game, and some people won't like that. And again, I'm probably pretty close to not liking that. The only reason why I do like the new system is because I think it suits the style of the game. Again, going back to what I said about look at this not as a Gran Turismo game, and people who are against it can enjoy it a lot more. View it just as sport, rather than GT Sport. So, am I saying by that that it's not a good Gran Turismo game, or that it doesn't live up to the hype, or that it doesn't live up to the other games? Well, yes and no. Because I enjoy the game, I am glad that I bought it, and I plan to play it a lot. I'm also very hopeful that they do add a lot more stuff, of course, both for the sake of YouTube, if I'm completely honest, and for myself, and for the enjoyment of playing a game. However, does it live up to what I wanted from a Gran Turismo game? No. I'm not going to claim that it does. It's a great game, but it's not the Gran Turismo that I wanted. To be fair, it's not the Gran Turismo that anyone wanted. Plenty of people are saying that they did, but I didn't hear any of this before the game was announced. I don't hear any clamour for an FIA game. I don't hear any clamour for a game without any decent selection of daily drivers. I don't hear a, a clamour for a game with no classics or vintage cars. So all of these people saying, oh yeah, I've wanted this for years. Really? Where were you? Because I didn't hear you saying that. The actual scenario is, this is what Kaz wanted. That's fair enough. It's his passion project. It's apparently his favourite Gran Turismo game so far which take that with a colossal grain of salt, given that it's the one he's currently advertising for sale. <laughs> but at the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, he's of course entitled to do whatever he wants with the game, but at the same time, don't then be surprised when the fans who have been with the franchise for so many years wanting a certain thing, and now feel that they aren't getting that thing, sometimes very justifiably, don't be surprised when they get annoyed with you about that. And I think he must have seen that coming, because it's a very pretty game, it's a very artful game, it's a very 
good looking game, it's very well laid out, very in depth, and once you get a good flow, as I said with the demo, once you get into this game, it becomes second nature, using all the different menus, it's great. But, people don't want art from their racing games, they want a racing game, that's kind of in the name. So, when you play this, I think you do need to be a, a type of gamer to enjoy it more. And I don't mean that to sound pretentious or arty. I am certainly not an elitist gamer. I drive with an automatic gearbox for Pete's sake, of course I'm not an elitist. But I do think that this will appeal a lot more to some people than others. If you go into this expecting something that delivers what GT2 or GT4 or GT5 delivered, which I would say are the three best of the franchise, in terms of sheer scope that is, and size, then you're not going to get that. Not at the moment, at least. So in the long run, I would say if this game, as a concept, doesn't appeal to you, then there's a 50-50 chance that you will or won't like it. Because as I said, this didn't appeal to me. But now that I'm actually playing it, I do like it a lot more than I was expecting to. At the same time, however, I don't disagree with anyone who says that this game isn't good enough. Even in my own episodes of Beards and Cars, where we had the candid discussion about my real thoughts, not that my reviews aren't real, but of course they have to be formal to some degree, I specifically said, this is not the Gran Turismo 7 that I wanted. That being said, I'm happily surprised, and I think one of the reasons why I've been so happily surprised is because unlike some people, again, people who I can identify with, I've never been angry with the concept of this game. I wasn't offended, I wasn't annoyed even, I was disappointed. And there's a big difference there, because just like with a movie that you're not expecting much from, you can be pleasantly surprised. Whereas if you specifically hate the idea of a movie, you're probably not going to like it no matter what. That's kind of the case here. If you hate the idea of GT Sport, then I think those feelings will probably remain after playing the game, because those reasons that you hate the game or hate the concept aren't going to go away, I don't think. For those like me, who weren't angry but were more just underwhelmed by the concept of a game which isn't a traditional Gran Turismo, then keep an open mind, and if you get the chance, try it. Don't necessarily buy it, try it if you can first. I'm not recommending that you go out and slap down a hundred quid on a collector's edition, certainly not, that's not for everyone. But Play it if you get the chance, of course make up your own mind instead of being told by other people. That's not the point of my reviews, I don't tell people what to think, I tell people what I've seen from the game, the information that they deserve to know that I have, and of course in this case more of a personal opinion. It's to each person to make up their own mind. Some people I'm sure are disappointed with it. Pretty much all of the people in my PSN list have been overwhelmingly positive from what I've seen. I haven't had any chatter or negative backlash from the people who I've seen playing online when I'm online. And I have to say, for me, that's been the case as well. I've been pleasantly surprised by it because, as I said, I wasn't opposed to the idea. I was just disappointed with it. So in the long run, certainly not a GT game for everyone. And yeah, it's kind of a, a weird game to review because it is so different. But yeah, give it a try. And of course, based on how the game goes, especially if we get big expansions, which I think Kaz does have in mind, and I mean beyond cars, I mean career mode and that kind of stuff, then of course we'll make another part in this series. But of course, feel free to slap your comments down below, I'm sure plenty of people already have, people who disagree in particular. But that's it overall for this particular review, so I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.